Julia Cameron is the creator and visionary behind the Julia Cameron luxury lifestyle and accessories brand. Julia loves all things health, fashion, spirituality, travel, art, empowerment, and inspiration. She exercises her passions through her jewelry, jewelry and accessory lines, lifestyle tips, interviews with movers and shakers, and the health and fitness retreats she runs with her partner all around the globe. She is an entrepreneur at heart, writer, designer, presenter, and voiceover artist with a passion for creativity and helping others overcome fear and self-doubt so that they can live the dream life of freedom they deserve and in the process become the best version of themselves and feel like the goddesses that they truly are. Julia grew up in Colorado, USA before moving to the UK where she continued to travel extensively. Summer spent in India where much of her style and ethos of, and love of colorful and statement jewelry came from particularly sparked her creative ideas. Having studied philosophy at Leeds University, Julia moved to Ibiza where she gathered further inspiration and some of her designs garnered attention. Julia's love and knowledge of vintage is also reflected in her jewelry collection, having spent time at auctions and flea markets in Paris sourcing collectible pieces. Julia has a rich artistic ancestral heritage which includes Virginia Woolf and her great-great-grandmother, Julia Margaret Cameron, who was a pioneering figure in the history of photography as part of a strong female movement in the creative arts. Join us as Julia takes us into her world of jewelry on the Just Game Show. Welcome to the Just Deep Show. Today on the show, I'll be talking to a young entrepreneur who is designs jewelry. Very lovely. I've seen some of the pieces and they're so, so nice. We're going to be asking her a lot of questions. We're going to be talking to her about what gives her the drive to do what she does. This is the Just Deep Show. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll be getting to meet our guest. You welcome back to the Just Eve Show. If you're just joining us, our guest today on the show is a young entrepreneur. Welcome to the show, Julia Hi. Cameron. It's good to have you Thank on the you. show. And now, um, on this show, what we always do, we go right back to the beginning what were your growing up years what were they like um well i grew up my dad was actually in the army so i moved around quite a lot so i grew up in america mm. um, and then i moved to england when i was about 10 years old mm. um and i was very lucky i had a lot of friends um because i was with lots of other traveling families i had mm. friends from all over the world so i spent a lot of time um in like asia and in india and places like that where i got a lot of in creative inspiration mm. for then my collections later on in life. Mm. So, um, do, you, do you have any siblings? I have, yep, yeah, I'm the middle child. I have a brother oh, okay. and a sister. I have an older brother and a younger sister. And um, all the girls in my family are very creative and arty, mm. but the boys are not at all. <laughs> so. so what do the boys do? Um, my brother works in banking. <laughs> Um, and my cousins also work in like corporate world. My sister's actually a fashion photographer. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, um, and I sort of started, um, I started doing like styling and that, that kind of aspect of fashion and then it grew into starting my own label and then mm. creating all these jewelry designs. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I traveled a lot when I was growing up. So I've kind of picked inspirations from all different parts of the world, but mm. mainly Asia, to be honest with mm. you. Um, did you go to school to study any of this? No. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Yeah. So I, um, I went to school and then I actually went to Leeds University and I studied um, philosophy. And I Can studied you imagine? <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny how you, you study one thing and then do something, do something totally different. Completely different. Yeah. And to be honest with you, like, 
I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I kind of went to uni because I felt like it was what I should do and I didn't really, I wasn't that focused unfortunately at the time and after uni even I was a little bit lost and not sure what I wanted to do but all I knew was that I always wanted to have my own business, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, I always wanted to work for myself and not answer to anyone else, that, that, that much I knew and I knew that I would like to do something creative because I'd always kind of been interested in like fashion and jewellery and that kind of thing. Um, but it wasn't until like after uni that I really kind of got my first idea to start my business and mm. to create a line of jewellery. Mm. So at what point did you know that, well, uh, you, you said you did the styling thing. Mm. At, at what point did you know that it's jewellery? Um, well, I was, originally I was, I used to go to like auctions and that kind of thing. As from a young age, I'd love to like find like really interesting old pieces of mm. vintage jewellery. And I built up quite a collection and I used to sort of find like little off cuts of jewellery and like just start kind of putting bits together myself and quite often I'd find really cool necklaces and I'd just like style them mm. as headpieces instead and kind of wear them out and that kind of thing and I suppose because a lot of people were like oh that's really cool I really like it I sort of think oh maybe I could you know create some more of these things so I started just using old pieces of vintage jewelry mm. and then I kind of had this vision of like these goddesses wearing these headdresses made of this like thin gold chain um, and yeah that I mean that was that was actually after after uni I was kind of not sure what I wanted to do and I was temping and doing lots of different kind of jobs and I just was like oh, I've got all these ideas but I just need like one to really focus mm. on and I just had this really strong vision of these goddesses mm. wearing these kind of gold chains and you know looking really feminine and powerful and and that was that and I just thought I'm gonna go for it nothing's stopping me. That's beautiful. Um, so where do you get your inspiration because you design them? Yes so. I design them all so um, I mean I've always loved like ancient mysticism and goddesses and I love all the old like ancient Greek stories about goddesses mm. and all that kind of thing and I love all the drapery of like Grecian togas so um, my original ideas really were from from Greek goddesses and also from my time spent in India like as you know Asian uh, mm. weddings and things they wear a lot of headpieces and I loved like wearing kind of bindis and all that kind of mm. thing so I kind of fused the two um, and I created, I sort of created about nine styles of the main headpiece using this gold chain to sort of make sure there was a style to fit kind of everyone, different, you know, hairstyles and different moods mm. and different events and that kind of thing. Okay, so what, um, um, how from, when you, do, when you have an idea, yeah. how do you, you sketch? So originally I used, I kind of did a mixture. I found someone to help me first make my first samples in London. Mm. And when I saw him, I kind of used various things because I'm not like an artist, you know, I didn't uh, sort of study just art. I mean, I've always drawn and things, mm. but I wouldn't say like I'm an amazing drawer. So you don't have to do it that yeah. way. But I just used a lot of other pieces of jewelry and I'd kind of put things together and show him how I liked it and use, you know, a bit of sketching here, but just really tactile, just putting different things together and, and kind of doing it like that. And then making a sample, going back, tweaking it, making another sample. Mm. So really that way, yeah, not just like one straight sketch. That's what I want. It was mm. very much um, quite a evolving process as I went along. Mm. Yeah. So how long um, does it take for you from start to finish? Oh, uh, gosh. For one, I mean, sometimes I get an idea like that and I'm just like, I know exactly what I want. And then it's really just the manufacturing time. Like, for example, this um, mm. sword here, I was in, I was looking for, I was just trying to get some inspiration and I was in London and I went to a place called the Wallace uh, Gallery, yeah. which um, has lots of sort of ancient relics and uh, artifacts and things. And I saw this collection of Indian swords and I just thought they're amazing. They would look so cool mm. in miniature <laughs> uh, as a necklace. So you like, I just like saw it there and I was like, right, that's what I want. And I just took photographs of it, sort of sketching and, and thinking about how it would work in a necklace. And then when I went to India, I just, you know, sat with, sat with the manufacturers there and, and that was that. You so know. You, you, your manufacturers are in India? Yeah. All of them? Yeah. Just... Well, I sometimes get one sample made here and then I'll go to India to sort of um, elaborate on it because they have beautiful gemstones there in Jaipur. So for example, this one I just had in plain silver. When I went to India, I adorned it with uh, gemstones so mm -hmm. now I've added like an emerald a ruby and a sapphire so it kind of it all sort of evolved as I go along my journey you know and I can see you're, you're extremely passionate from the way you're talking about it so it's like um you would do this for as long as you can yeah I mean I, I want to create I mean I won't 
say I'll ever do anything other than jewelry because mm. I might like have an idea. I have lots of ideas. I might have an idea for I a, get the feeling. you know, it could be a dress or something. Mm. I'm just kind of a creative person, but certainly I think jewelry, because jewelry stands the test of time if yeah. it's made well. And I try and make pieces that are quite classic, you know, mm. it's not like my headpieces are very unusual. So it's not like they're just going to come in one season and go out that they're, they're always going to be unusual. So I try and create things that aren't like trend driven, if mm. you see what I mean. Mm. Um, but yeah, certainly. I will always do jewellery and um, I've now kind of created more of a lifestyle brand where I incorporate, you know, blogs and, and tips um, really about, you know, how you can feel more like a goddess, not using jewellery, but also, you know, just using sort of self-development tips and things like that. Okay. Um, where would you see yourself in five years time? Five years time, I would like to, well, I'd like to have more presence with my jewelry. So mm. I've created a couple of more commercial um, products like my gratitude bracelets. Um, and I'd like to see that in like a department store. So I'm talking to a few at the moment, so fingers crossed. Um, but they're actually a charity piece. So 10% of each sale goes to charity. So mm. the more awareness I can have for that, the better. Um, so yeah, it would probably be to be stocked in bigger shops and mm. worldwide really, but I am very much focused on online at the moment. Yeah, that's great. We're going to take a short break now. We're going to have a look at some of her pieces and um, when we come back, we'll, be talk we'll continue with this conversation. start with any resources, I didn't have any sort of money saved or investment or I just had like a lot of energy and I just knew that I had to do it and I, actually I think one of the main things I would try So I would, to anyone starting out, I would really recommend like trying to get a mentor. There are lots of, like from Learn Now, there's a lot of free help out there. Uh, but at the beginning I kind of overlooked it. You welcome back and um, we're just rounding up the show right now. Our guest today has been Julia Cameron. She makes these wonderful pieces of jewelry, not the one I'm wearing at the moment. I should have actually <laughs> should worn, have bought you yeah, I should have actually <laughs> I should have actually worn one. But um, you did see some of her beautiful pieces in the break. Now um, you are an entrepreneur. Now um, in the present UK, a lot of young people are, are lost let me yeah. use that word they don't know just like you said they don't know what they want to do they don't know how to go about what they do what yeah. advice would you have for them well when I started I you know you really have to focus on your resourcefulness and not your resources mm. because I didn't start with any resources I didn't have any sort of money saved or investment or I just had like a lot of energy and I just knew that I had to do it and I, actually I think one of the main things I would try and do is collaborate collaborate with lots of other young creatives because everyone needs to build up their portfolios mm. everyone needs to gain experience so I mean to be honest my whole first year of business was really based on creating photo shoots with other young entrepreneurs and designers so we were all helping each other you know so we weren't having to spend lots of money on big expensive shoots or anything so I say collaboration is really really key and and just thinking outside of the box there's always a way where there's a will there's a way mm. okay um I know that um, you've you've told them what you know what they think they should do. Now, some, especially um, the black community, they 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 kind of are stereotyped into doing one main thing. They have huge ambitions, but they do not know how to to go about it. You know, a lot of them think that they are limited by their color, okay. right? What would you say to to such? Um, well, I, you know, I believe totally in getting rid of limiting beliefs in any, it doesn't matter where, you know, where you're from, everyone has, uh, you know, limiting beliefs in what they can and what they can't do. But, you know, as long as you've got a vision and the energy and the confidence to put yourself out there, you will attract by virtue of like what you reflect out, you will attract back. Mm. Um, 
I don't know really. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what else you can What else you can say to them? Well, I guess like you're saying, it's all a matter it's, of um, self belief. Yeah, it's all self self value, self worth, self belief. You know, don't compare yourself to other people too much because we're all on our own journey. You know, there's no point being envious of anyone else because that's just a negative energy. I think you should always just focus on what you do have and count the achievements that you've got because mm. when you're sort of when you fill your cup up you will inherently attract opportunities to you so just yeah if you limit yourself you will create limitations mm. i just believe it's all in the mind and you you you, you had your parents support you because some parents do, just think that you've gone to school to do this why should you do something else um i mean of course my parents are kind of like you know <laughs> what are you doing yeah yeah i'm not going to say they support me 100 percent because obviously they worry if you don't have a if you're self employed you don't have a stable income mm -hmm. and you know they're always worried about me but I always kind of I was managing starting my business I had like three or four part-time jobs at the time so I was really like the first two years I was like every weekend I'm doing a photo shoot or this or that and then in the week I had like a day job an evening job sometimes I do event jobs on the weekend because you have to do whatever it takes in the beginning mm -hmm. to build that foundation I think that's one thing <coughs> determination and mm -hmm. discipline did you do did you attend any um exhibitions or, uh, um, I, I did trade shows when I first started mm. um, obviously I attended exhibitions to see what other jewelry designers were doing and you just do a lot of research and asking people like what's worked for them but at the end of the day like you have to go through it all yourself like mm. I've done a lot of trade shows and you know they probably weren't always worth it because they are expensive and you spend money but you just have to try for yourself to see what works, really. Mm. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that's the best way to go. I think social media is a big thing now. Mm. And if you can kind oh, of get yeah. your, I haven't even got my <laughs> head around it. But if you can, then obviously that's a good start. Um, if you can get that right, because you've got so much more avenues of awareness. Mm. Mm. Um, but just getting out there, you know, networking, you know, I try and be out and meeting other people as much as I can and going on things like meetup. There's like jewelry talks. Yeah, meetup, yeah. I go to some jewelry mm. talks and you get people telling you about branding and, and business advice because that's one thing that I've really struggled with because mm. I'm creative. I haven't really known. You know, that's, that's the thing about creative people. They always forget the business side of, yeah. of things. They get carried away oh, yeah. by, by the art. I've definitely done mm. that. Yeah, so I would... To anyone starting out, I would really recommend like trying to get a mentor. There are lots of this, like from Learn Now. There's a lot of free help out there, mm. um, but at the beginning, I kind of overlooked it because I was mm. so focused on just doing the fun, creative bit. But actually, you've got to turn it into a business. Mm, and so, exactly. um, as much as you can, I would suggest like you know getting advice from people who are in business or have already done what you want to do. Mm. Yeah. That's fine. Would you say at this point in, in since you've started that you are comfortable or you know you're you're, you're not still struggling? Oh, I'm ne I never say I'm comfortable. I think mm. if you're comfortable, you're not growing mm. as much. Um, I mean, I always I'm always striving for more, but I'm I'm uh, sort of happy yes. where I am, yeah. like set where I am. But there's always more. There's always more to to do and to mm. achieve. Um, and it takes time. Like you know, I kind of thought you know I'm only I'm a very new company really. I've only been doing two and a half years are you serious yeah you know you, you you're the way you're talking and the way i've what i've seen it's like you've been doing this forever oh no i started when i was 26 no, 28. wow <laughs> so that yeah. is amazing well done oh thank you yeah well i don't know <laughs> well, yeah, you know because it's i'm listening i'm sitting here listening to you talk and the advice you've given where you've been you know it's like you've been doing it you know for ages oh, really? that's that that is an inspiration oh, if you ask me you. I'm, I'm highly inspired by oh, that. No, I feel very much like I'm just totally starting out, really. Oh. Still need <laughs> yeah, I still, I've learned a lot so mm. far, but I know there's a huge amount of my journey to, mm. to go towards. But yeah, still, still kind of learning, yeah. Thank you. Unfortunately, time is never our friend when we're having fun. So we have to go now. But I wish you all the best. Thank, thank you, you so much. Can I give you a hug? Yeah, thank you. Really, because I really, really love that. Thank you. you know? Thank you. Well, that's our show for today. We've been talking to Julia Cameron, who makes wonderful pieces of jewelry. If you had been watching from the beginning, I'm sure you must have seen some of her pieces. Well, we can't go on anymore. We have to say goodbye at this point. Until we see again sometime very soon, you go have yourself a wonderful time. I remain Evelyn Obaho. Goodbye. <laughs>